Now, we're up to layer two. Now that we're talking about encryption. Now, WEP. You know what WEP is? Yes. What's it? What is it? It's an authentication mechanism. Wireless, no, wired equivalency pro uh, protocol. Protocol, yeah. It's old and it's weak and it's not to be used, okay? But here's how it works, because it's not just this is weaker and WPA is better. Here's a, diff here's a couple of differences about it. It can have up to four, but, but that's not, well, there's only one really. There's the access point, okay? And we have the web, the web key, okay? Beautiful. We have a station here, uh, station one. He associates to the AP. And he's got the same web key, okay? So they can talk to each other. Here's station two. Let's keep it, keep it in line. Here's station two. It associates to the AP as well, and it's also got the web key. That key, that web key, is used to encrypt the traffic. What that means is that when that station sends traffic to the AP, station two can understand it. Station two can listen to everything station one does because they are using the same key to encrypt the traffic. You have another one there, station three, also with the same key. Guess what? They can all hear everyone's traffic. So even though it's encrypted using web from everybody else who doesn't know the key, all the other people who use it can still see each other. Like if we're in this room and we're all using web, okay, we've got a web AP and we've all got the, pass, the password. When you send data to me, he can read it, okay, because it's the same key. WPA doesn't work that way. WPA is different, okay. That was web. Now, WPA. WPA has a passphrase, generally. Just to keep it simple for now, the pre-shared key, we'll talk about a passphrase. Okay? Now, everybody has that passphrase. Okay? The AP knows it. You have to put it in your station, like we have our guest network here. You all know the passphrase. Okay? And you've all got it. But that passphrase is not what is used to encrypt the traffic, okay? To encrypt the traffic, we have a 256-bit traffic, well, we have a 256-bit key, which is split up into different areas. But we get, that, we get that key by this. When the station associates to an AP, okay, so we've done our authentication, we know the protocol's good, we associate to it, now we get to the, the encryption part. What we actually do, between the station and that AP, we make our traffic encryption key then. And we do, that is, you might have heard of the four-way handshake. Okay. A four-way handshake takes place between this AP and the station. And they negotiate the key right there. And it's particular to them, based on the MAC addresses and some random numbers. It's, it, they create the traffic key. So now this station has a traffic key. And that can talk to the access point. When station two comes along and goes to the AP, he does the same thing, okay? They associate, they use the passphrase that they all know, but then they make their own traffic key just for those two stations. So once they're done, they can talk. And the same thing with station three, who come along, associate to the AP, do their four-way handshake as well, and station three can send traffic. But the traffic keys are different for all the stations, which means station two can't listen to station one. Station three can't, they can't listen to each other. Okay, and that's a fundamental difference between WEP and WPA as well as, of course, how the algorithm works. There's a little variation to that, 
and it's called the group key. Now, if the AP wants to send a broadcast, everybody has to understand that, okay? If it's unicast, you know what I mean by broadcast and unicast? I mean, unicast is one to one, broadcast is one to everyone. If the AP is sending traffic to station one, it'll use station one's pairwise key, because that's just the pair, the pairwise between them. If it's sending a broadcast out, it will use a different key, the group key, okay? So that, that's, that's a fundamental difference between WEP and WPA. Did you have a question then, or were you just playing with Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. We can actually, um, if, if you have the passphrase and you can capture from the air the four-way handshake, you can then decrypt that traffic. So if I want to decrypt Station 2's traffic, I need to know the passphrase and I need to capture their four-way handshake. And you can do that with Wireshark. Wireshark will let you do that. Okay, because you've got everything you need. You've got everything that they used to create that key. Okay, so that's a, that's a, with a passphrase. We might have um, 802.1x, so we use a radius server for our, uh, see this is authentication now, but it's different to the 802.11 authentication that I spoke of before. That was all just about protocol handshaking. This type of authentication is like user authentication and, and encryption comes with it. If you use a radius server, the, the material that starts it is not a passphrase. It comes from like the service certificate or, or some other mechanism. So it's the same concept though. They have to make their pairwise key with using a four-way handshake. But see, if you've got a client that can't connect, maybe they're maybe their user isn't in a radius database. If they're not in the radius database, it'll say, no, you're not allowed and we're not going to get to this. 